Welcome to Robin Spears Online, live online, Calgary's Real Estate Hotline, where we want to hear questions you guys have about real estate. Uh, you can leave your questions in our comments section if you, if you want, uh, or if you want to keep your questions private, you can private message us or send them to info at robinspears.com. So I'm just going to get to the live Q&A in a moment here, but before I do, just a reminder, if you have any friend or family member uh, who has questions about real estate, go ahead and tag them in the comment section below so they can tune in and get their questions answered. Um, hopefully you're not looking for something too, too polished because then you're in the wrong place. But if you're looking for uh, content, then you're in the right place. So anyway, uh, getting to the questions, um, I'm going to deal with a question that was sent in actually. Um, this is from Judy. Um, some things I read Talk about how bad the market is and some is good. What's the market really like right now for buyers and sellers? So uh, Judy, very good question. Uh, you can get caught up in uh, what the media is saying. There's all kinds of different things you can hear out there. Uh, it varies. I mean, uh, they tend to just focus on one thing and of course they're trying to sell papers. So keep that in mind too. I'm not saying that they're misrepresenting things but uh, the big picture is hard to report and it's not very exciting so right now two things are really helping the market right now even even for condos because condos uh, the last year have really taken a bit of a hit whereas um, uh, single-family detached homes have actually done very well and continue to do well but um, uh, two things to note the number of listings number of property that are that's out on the market right now is drastically reduced, uh, both uh, condos and houses. Uh, but the number of transactions, so the number of sales, is actually up. So these two factors are really helping the market right now. Even condos have, have uh, experienced an increase in the number of sales. It's still kind of a tough market out there for condos right now. Um, but where single family detached homes are concerned, uh, that especially anything under $500,000 just doesn't seem to be, if it's priced well, it's going in the first few days. If it's not priced well, it seems to be sitting on the market for a long time. Any detached homes, if they're on the market for more than 30 days, <clears throat> excuse me, then they're probably overpriced or there might be something wrong with the marketing. But anyway, uh, the market is actually pretty good right now. Certainly compared to this time last year, it's a lot better. So uh, that's, uh, hopefully that answers your question, Judy. Um, let's see, another question that's come in. Uh, should I buy brand new or buy pre-owned? So this is a, an interesting question. And I know a lot of uh, people might think that a realtor might say, well, don't buy brand new. but Actually, I don't think there's any builders that don't work with realtors anymore and your realtor can actually help you uh, with negotiating uh, with the builder. So it doesn't matter whether it's buying brand new or buying pre-owned. It depends on what you want. It really comes down to your goals. So for instance, if you're someone that doesn't want to live in a home that's been lived in other people, well, building, if that's your number one thing, then obviously building is the way to go. But if there's a big process involved. There's usually an outlay of money uh, that you're paying for some of the purchase and mortgage even before you get possession of the property. There's other factors too. Usually if that's if you're getting a new build, there's probably uh, a lot of construction going on in the neighborhood, uh, a lot of dust, that sort of stuff. So uh, I've actually heard uh, one common comment about anybody who's built or renovated extensively and the comment was that was interesting uh, whether they were glad to do it or not they said that they probably would not do it again so it's not for everybody I think a lot of people find that uh, it's great to have something brand new but there's a lot of other things that they weren't counting on uh, from when they get possession there's usually a number of deficiencies uh, that come out of it and not that they're bad things but it's, the house isn't completely done yet sometimes you don't even have a driveway when you have to take possession of your home so it just depends again what your as long as you know what you're in for then you can go in with your eyes wide open often to the newer neighborhoods you're right on top of your neighbor if you go for an older neighborhood 
with a home that's you know 20 30 years old um, you tend to have bigger lots you tend to have more space in between homes obviously probably closer to town because if you're building something new unless it's a custom build you're probably in some of the outer lying neighborhoods which means that you're not too close to downtown so if you've got a commute to downtown that could play a factor as well you know if you're on the road 45 minutes or more each way to work and back then that can affect your lifestyle and some people want to be closer so again there's a huge number of factors that come into play here and uh, your best bet is to get all the answers make a list quite frankly I'm really big on pros and cons list making a list as to whether you know what's a pro put that in the pro column what's a negative put that in the uh, uh, negative column and then determine you know out of all of those what's your best uh, scenario so hopefully that answers that question um, moving along here uh, just coming up just seeing uh, who's logged on here we've got um, uh, Marion on there uh, looks like Ken has joined us welcome Ken uh, we've got another question here is it better to own or rent uh, so this is like the age old question of um, you know I'm assuming this is uh, whether it's better to own a property and live in it or whether it's better to rent a property and live in it there's actually a very, very good um, objective uh, video that was created by someone who uh, wrote for the Globe and Mail, I think it was. I'll dig up this link and I'll post it in the comment section after the broadcast today. It's very close, uh, but it's, it's very close because that's only if a renter is very, very disciplined with their money and the money that they might save in some aspects of renting versus owning. But if they're not, then owning outshines renting by a long shot. So um, I'll post that and that'll probably give you a lot of uh, uh, insight into whether you should rent or buy. At the end of the day, I, mean, I think most people have always thought it was very heavily one-sided into owning versus renting, but it's not quite the case. It is a little closer than people might think. And um, looking at this video, I'm sure will uh, uh, emphasize or enlighten you a little bit to some of those things but uh, owning does still edge out renting long term but again that's provided that the renter is very very disciplined with some of the money that they're saving so uh, Ken has uh, provided a question here uh, Ken says there seems to be a lack of properties on the market and added purchasing activity why would you attribute what would you attribute this to and how do you feel things would unfold over the duration of the year or am I perceiving things wrong here no Ken you're absolutely right uh, like I would mentioned earlier there's uh, about I think it's somewhere between 14 and 20 percent less listings on the market right now year to date than there was last year at this time so that puts a you know anybody who's looking for good deals to maybe uh, buy and flip or buy and hold long term or even buy and live in there's a shortage of these out there and because there's an increase in the number of um, transactions as well that puts just even more pressure so there's definitely a lack of supply compared to last year and a lot more activity which those two things combined is putting a lot of pressure on uh, you have to act quickly it's actually kind of funny you know given the economy that we're in uh, we're in a scenario where uh, it's not quite like 2013 and 14 where things were really going up but it, what is similar is how fast things are going off the market anything that's under five hundred thousand dollars and if it's priced well it's going in the first day or two if you're not there in the first day or two to uh, make an offer then it's uh, then you're writing a backup offer or you're waiting and hoping that it might come back on the market so uh, good question and definitely you're not uh, perceiving things wrong there Ken so anyway um, that's uh, all the questions we've got for today um, just want to remind everybody if uh, if you do have questions um, please feel free to post them in our comment section below either during or after the broadcast because if it's after the broadcast we'll uh, answer it next week and if it's before the broadcast uh, we'll have it in line with the questions like uh, 
we answer today. So anyway, hopefully uh, you guys found this information um, helpful and please tune in next week. Um, don't forget again to leave your questions and uh, in the comment section. Oh, sorry. And don't forget to, uh, if you do want them private, you can private message us or uh, send them to our email address at info at robinspears.com. So thanks again for tuning in and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you next week.